Welcome back. In the last few videos, we've been studying sounds and the relationships between pairs of sounds. We've studied phonemes, which are two sounds that we think are different, and allophones, which are two sounds that we feel are just alternations of the same mental representation. So phonemes, two different things. Allophones, two contextually specific presentations of the same thing. In this video, we're going to study a third type of relationship between sounds called free variation. So again, which phonological configurations do we know so far? We have, for example, phonemes like S and Z in English. And we know these two are different phonemes because we have minimal pairs between them, like SU and ZU, for example. Those two words are different only because one starts with this sound, su, and this one starts with zu. So su and zu are minimal pairs, and from them we know that s and, that s and z are two phonemes of English. On the other hand, we have sounds like pa and pa, which are in complementary distribution. So sometimes you see the sound pa unaspirated, and you see it when it follows an S. Uh, sometimes you see this sound, a pa, and you only see that one at the start of a word, according to, we data, to the data that we have so far. So these are two phonetic manifestations of the same mental reality, which we're going to call a phoneme. The phoneme P has two allophones, unaspirated and aspirated. And these two allophones are in complementary distribution, because when we see one, we do not see the other. So that's what we got so far. Uh, let's take a look at the English phoneme P. We know that P has certain allophones. It has the aspirated pa at the beginning of a word, near, uh, when it's preceded by the word edge. We have the unaspirated P when it, is, when it appears together with an S, as in space or spot. But what happens with a P if it's at the end of a word? So I want you to take a moment to try to pronounce those words and then try to figure out what sound is being produced. So take a minute, just say them out loud. Try to see if it's this one, if it's this one, if it's some other thing, if it can be more than one thing. Please pronounce those words and try to feel what sounds you're producing. Please pause the video. All right, so we have the sounds stop, top, tap, and map, which are the context, uh, the environment, I'm sorry, where you find P before a word etch, before the end of a word. So what sound goes here? What is the allophone that English uses when the P have, uh, occurs at the end of a word? Maybe you, you were saying these ones. Maybe you said something like stop or map. And again, my scientific instrument, they really are not aspirated. Stop, map. They have a little bit of aspiration, but it's not like pot, for example. Stop, map. So maybe you were saying the, the P that is not aspirated. But maybe you were saying this stop map this little uh, diacritic here means that this is an unreleased p an unreleased sound is a sound where you set up your articulators for the position and then you don't explode the stop so this would be stop map for these two sounds and um, you might have pronounced either of these, maybe you pronounced both of these, but the most important thing is that there's two options for how you can say this word, these words. You can say map or you can say map, and they do not change the meaning of the word. So these two are not minimal pairs. Both of them mean the object where you see the locations. So they cannot possibly be phonemes. 
However, they live in the same environment. So they cannot, they're not in complementary distribution. They do live in the same spot. And most importantly, they, they both kind of sound okay. The, these are really two ways in which you could pronounce this word. We're going to call this configuration free variation. Free variation is a configuration of two sounds where these are allophones. However, um, they can both co-occur in the same environment. They are not in complementary distribution. So these are two allophones of P and both of them are present at the when the P is at the end of a word. And because they do not change the meaning, you could really choose to say it in one way or the other. This is what we call free variation. And again, they do not change the meaning. It's very important to look at this because it's it, dis, it is free variation structurally. Like it doesn't change the core meaning of the word. But when you have uh, free variation, you are free to give that variation social meaning. Because maybe saying map or map does not change the meaning of the core meaning of the word, but you could decide with your friends to pronounce it one way or the other. So people will understand the word that you mean but they will also know that you're coming from one location or from the other, for example. This is um, structural free variation, but you can use it to express social or social linguistic variation. And then you and your friends can say this one, and those people from 12th grade B can use this one, for example. Both of you would understand the meaning, but then you'd know that this is for the cool kids and this is for the other kids. So let's look at a flow chart of what we have so far. Let's say you have two sounds like pa and pa or s and esh. Do you have a minimal pair for them? If the answer is yes, then those two sounds are phonemes. For example, p and b are phonemes in English because we have the minimal pairs pat and bat. If you do not have a minimal pair, then you need to figure out the contexts, the environments where you see these sounds. If you if they have if they do not occur in the same environments, then they are two allophones in complementary distribution. These would be the aspirated p and p in English, because when we see this one, we cannot see the unaspirated one. So there's a clear position where you need the aspirated one and a clear position where you need the unaspirated one. However, if you find that both sounds can exist in the same environment, then they would be in free variation. For example, the released unaspirated and the unreleased P. They are in the same environment, but they do not change the meaning. So they're not minimal pairs. So they are in free variation. And by the way, for them to be allophones or in free variation, we usually think that they need to be phonetically similar. They cannot be completely distinct sounds. And as a matter of fact, yeah, P and an aspirated P are very similar. In summary, a phoneme is a group of, uh, a group of sounds, a bundle of sounds that is perceived as being the same. Uh, for example, uh, pa, pa, the one that is unreleased, all of these are, we think of them as different personalities of the sound P, of the phoneme P. We use phonemes to distinguish between words, and the phonemes have allophones, the pa, the pa, which are concrete phonetic manifestations. There are some positions where allophones can be in free variation. For example, at the end of words in English, um, P and unreleased P are in free variation. And allophones are usually phonetically similar, as we can see from all the examples with P.